Hey, hey, welcome to the last video of chapter 14. We're going to learn about electromagnetic waves, an important wave in our lives, as you will see. What is an electromagnetic wave? Good question. Now, this thing down here, long? you see the blue line, there's one wave. You see the red line, there's another wave, and they both oscillate together Ping! at perpendicular angles. But you're like, hmm, miss my eye is confusion. Never mind, I show you the animation here. Okay, so this is how it looks like. You have a magnetic field. Here, the magnetic field are red, the flat one, and your electric field vectors, which is the vertical one, magnetic and electric field wave oscillate together. So let me make them start moving. Let's see, let's change this to 0 0.3. Okay, so this is what we call a wave propagation. And you see these arrows up here? That's just what a particle would experience at any point in along the wave. Let's say I choose one point here. Then it will just oscillate up and left, and then down and right, up and left, because the waves are up, down, but also left, right. So two-dimensional wave. If you're confusion, you do this with your hand. With one hand, you go up and down. With your other hand, you go left and right. Then you do both together. Can ah? It should be like this, ah. Okay, this is called the electromagnetic wave dance. You can start a trend on TikTok, you know. Can you change your hands? Now your left one go up and down. Your right hand go left and right, okay? This is how electric wave is moving. Do it with me until you understand. Oh, okay? Two waves, one wave, two wave, and they both oscillate together. Together, they are called the electromagnetic wave. Here's one more simulation where you kind of see how there's two planes perpendicular to each other and the direction of oscillation uh, or direction of propagation. See this arrow here? So think of a cardboard. La. You put two cardboard uh, perpendicular to each other like this. So first one, you have the electric field, okay, propagating. Sure, I can play for you. Ah, looks like that, oh. one wave. Then stop. Let me add the flat magnetic field. Okay, it's going to go left and right, horizontally in this case. Lah. Then if you add both together, you have the horizontal plane, you have the vertical plane, you have the vertical field and the horizontal field, and together they look beautiful. Look at that. And there are some very interesting properties about this electromagnetic magnetic wave. So we're going to take a look at some of these properties that make these waves amazing. First property is, as we have pointed out, it's two waves. Well, two fields, I should say. The elect E field, electric field, okay, we call this E field. Uh, and the B field, magnetic field. Why is magnetic B? Well, physics just decided to choose B field instead of M field. So we shall stick with B field oscillating perpendicular to each other. That's the planes that we're looking at. And also perpendicular to, I should put a comma, to each other, comma, and the direction of wave energy uh, propagation. So that's this uh, white ye um, yellow color arrow here. So this is propagation. Okay, so everything is perpendicular to each other. You can have some speed, la, V, whatever it is. Okay, some speed propagation. That's where the energy is flowing okay, towards, towards me over here. That's the first fact. Now what is the second fact? We said this uh, energy propagation, right? But what, what is that speed? Well, you can say that these, electromag these electromagnetic wave, you know, it's like two waves coupled together, travels at some speed. What's that speed? Speed of light. How did people discover this? Ooh, go and Google that. Go through the history of science, which is a very interesting topic for those who enjoy it. Anyway, uh, this is a speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power, uh, 3 times 10 to the power of 8. Very, very fast. Nothing should be going faster than this. In the vacuum, but at least. The vacuum. So this is a constant you will want to remember or know how to find in the data and formula booklet for exams or in your calculator. All calculators can get constants, so you just need to know how to press it. Okay, what's another property? The last one that you must, must know is that this electromagnetic wave is a bit special. Previously, oh, when you're in water, you need water as your medium. Right? And then we look at Doppler's effect. If you're in air, you need air as your medium. Okay, then the wave propagates through the air. But this electromagnetic wave, oh, does not need you can does not necessarily need a medium. It's a bit magical. It can travel in a vacuum. Vacuum means nothing lah. Nothingness, also it can propagate. Okay, it can travel in a vacuum and also many, many different kind of medium. So if got water, okay lo, if got air, okay lo, if got vacuum, okay lo, still can propagate. 
and different mediums. So, pretty amazing. Nothing can stop it. I mean, in the mediums. But importantly, vacuum lah. In, for sound waves, all this, or if you go to outer space, it's all silent because sound cannot propagate in the vacuum. Okay? And these are the three main facts you will want to keep in mind. There are two more I'm going to introduce to you, but they are not like life or death. The other the first thing is that these electromagnetic waves can be polarized. What is this? Have you heard of polarized sunglasses? You know those fancy sunglasses? I have one of those, I'll show you someday maybe. But they cut out light in a very special way. But what does polarized mean? I'll put a pause here. If you're interested, go to the link below and watch about polarization. But this one is very strangely not in the 2016 to 2022 syllabus. So you may, you may find fear, uh, previous past years that mention it. That'll be pre-war 2016. Uh. After 2022, this polarization will come back. So kind of weird. Okay. So if you are in the 2022 syllabus, beyond 2022 syllabus, then yes, go and learn about polarization. But also, one more fact we want to point out is, remember I say it travel in vacuum, right? So that also means that this wave can carry energy with no mass. What on earth does that mean? AKA, no medium needed. Okay, this is just a fun fact, okay? You will learn more about this in A2 quantum physics, Q physics. But we'll just plant this little thought here that electromagnetic waves are pretty amazing. Okay. So what should you know at this A level, AS level then? Well, the only thing you need to know now is some of these key properties up here, the top three. And also, you need to know the electromagnetic spectrum. You probably have seen this before in IG or SPM or CVSE or whatever other program you have. Okay, There are two main things here. It's in terms of wavelengths. Look at all these beautiful prefixes. Right side is in terms of frequency in hertz. Now, you need to memorize this. How you want to memorize it? Many ways lah. Okay? I suggest if you memorize wavelength, then you stick with wavelength. If you memorize frequency, then you stick with frequency. But how they relate is V equals to F lambda. Right? We know this wave speed. And we know that electromagnetic waves propagate at the speed of light. So C equals to F lambda. So C is a constant already lo. So if your frequency is getting smaller, like, you know, getting down to this kilo cycle here, you see the wavelength is super long in kilometer range. Wow. So, and if you memorize your wavelength, memorize, then you just calculate. Lah. Calculate frequency. If you memorize the frequency, then you calculate wavelength. Lah. Okay. So just memorize one side. Lah, unless you, are, you have a lot of extra brain bandwidth, then memorize both. Sure. But let's look at, take a look at this. I recommend we start with visible light. So let's start with our beautiful visible light right here. Visible light is what we can see. And you see, it's only like a tiny, what is this? 10 to the power of negative 6 meters, micrometer level. That is the wavelength of visible light that our eyes can see. Everything else, our eyes cannot see. Okay? And if you want to think of frequencies, that's about 10 to the 15. Prefix, ah, uh, think of your prefixes. This is why we learn prefix and standard forms. These are all called prefixes. Okay, so think about visible light first. Be familiarized with that because that, that's what we can see. Now, when the wavelength is very, very short, you will come to purple, very small here, like, on top of the rainbow. Purple is basically like ultraviolet color. Lo. Have you ever been to those UV rooms? You know those, you play laser tag, the UV light is purple color. That's ultraviolet somewhere there already. So it's purplish. So at the sh the high energy end of your visible light. Okay, by the way, up here is higher energy. Higher frequency, higher energy. Okay, so you go up to ultraviolet, which is a short range, also known as UV. UV light from the sun, we put lotion to make sure we don't get tan. Then you go up some more, you come to a very dangerous region already. So anything above visible light in energy, danger. I should put this danger. Danger. X-rays, very dangerous to your body because they have the uh, they are, they can ionize and knock off electrons from your I don't know your body cells, proteins, atoms. Okay, 
They have ionization power. All these fellows have them. So X-rays is about, roughly remember the range, la, negative 12 to negative 7 meters or 10 to 21 hertz to, well, 10 to 16 hertz. So it's a pretty big range here. Dangerous X-rays. Then, of course, there's the super, super duper high energy gamma rays. You'll learn this in chapter 26 a little bit. But the symbol we use for gamma is this gamma rays. We usually don't blast this through human body because that's what we call like, I don't know, kind of like radioactive almost. Well, anyway, we'll leave that for later. But if you get a gamma ray hitting you, whoa, you probably get cancer. I don't know. Actually, X-ray and ultraviolet also can get cancer already. So up here is the danger zone. Ultraviolet also kind of dangerous because skin cancer, UV from the sun. Okay, up there is dangerous. Below visible light, pretty safe. So you divide it in half, you must must remember visible light, what's the frequency, wavelength. Then you come, above that is dangerous, below that is what? Okay, <coughs> frequency of visible light, let's go. Like I said, this area is not dangerous, pretty okay to pass through our bodies. Firstly, we have infrared. Ah, you see the word here, red, right? That's because it's when you if you can see infrared is kind of a very dark red color, and you see the bottom of the rainbow is red color, so that's the lowest energy wavelength already. Okay, low frequency and the wavelength is longer. So below that is what infrared lo? After the red color of the rainbow is infrared. We cannot see it. Some animals can. Plants can. I think plants can see them. Yeah. Anyway, you have like infrared camera, night vision camera. We also call this night vision. Because uh, you go to some security place, you see a camera there. It's kind of glowing red, but it's pretty dark. Actually, in that video, uh, you are very bright because it's shining infrared light on you. It's just that you cannot see it. So to you, it looks like, oh, it's a dark room. I can steal stuff. No, no, no. Infrared night vision camera. Well, the night vision camera can see you. Below infrared, you just remember it's a microwave already. Microwave oven, uh, yeah, well, somewhere there. Uh, kind, yeah, you could think of it. This is kind of in the gigahertz, I guess. Gigahertz range. Gigahertz to terahertz. Uh. Tera is 12, my giga is 9. So somewhere around there is microwave range. Um, yeah, roughly know that. And then you see all this radio, radio, radio down here, right? This one, you just... Don't worry about what radio, radio, radio. You just know radio is somewhere here. Can already. All these are radio waves. And look at that. This is the landmark you want to remember. One meter. Very long. Oh. The wavelength is one meter. So anything larger than one meter is radio wave. And this is kind of like low energy already. So low energy. Okay, the cycles are very low. Frequency very low. All wavelength is very, very long. Long. We'll see more about radios in A2. This whole chapter on communications, lots of fun stuff there too as well. Now, one fun trivia. Where do you think our Wi-Fi is among this whole spectrum? Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi router used for your phone. Try and look through gamma, x-ray, ultraviolet, infrared, microwave or radio. <coughs> hmm. Here's how we can think of it. Wi-Fi... Okay, la, maybe you Google it. Sure. But Wi-Fi is around 2.5 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz. So somewhere around here. Let me draw a Wi-Fi logo for you. Okay. And which is, well, can be dangerous for human body. It depends because microwave, there is one frequency for a microwave oven, which is water's resonant frequency. So H2O resonance. That's why your oven, microwave oven can cook stuff that is water. And that is not too far away from your Wi-Fi frequency, which is why sometimes when people say, hey, we want 5 gigahertz, but also health concerns. Mm, you don't know about that. So go do some research and learn more about your Wi-Fi routers. And please don't put your Wi-Fi routers next to your heads or your phone next to your head. You, before you sleep, put plane mode or throw it somewhere further away, okay? So yeah, that's just electromagnetic waves, fun stuff. Now, what should you know about this? I said memorize, right? Because in the past the questions, they will ask you to estimate. Let's look at some very short example questions. Just a few because they're all pretty much the same. First one is on page 9. 
Which statement about electromagnetic radiation is correct? You see, they ask you. This one is gamma, this one is ultraviolet, this one is in, in, uh, infrared, which one is light wave? You try and see, pause the video, see if you can guess which one you need. Uh, you might need to, uh, what you call that? You might need to peek at the previous charts now, in case you haven't memorized it. Hey, sorry, I just realized, page, not page 9, page 8, the page before. Small error, small error. Okay, let's take a look at it. Now, like I say, how you can memorize in frequency or wavelength is up to you, but what I usually do is I start with visible light. Looks like all this is in wavelength, right? Okay, lo. so I do either calculate or hopefully I memorize wavelength. So visible light is about uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. So anything above, what is above, you think, oh, UV, UV, why my U and V look the same one? UV, then more dangerous is what? X-ray. Even more dangerous is gamma. Two M's. Then, bottom of visible is the red color one. Infrared. See, they give you red. Uh, below infrared is microwave. And then below microwave is the very long one, maybe. Radio wave. Microwave. Okay. So, let's see. Waves of wavelength are high energy gamma rays. So, again, I need to think about Gamma rays. Gamma rays is roughly about times 10 to negative 12 meter ish. So this is a bit too too small. Too small. These are like X-ray regions. Somewhere here. X-ray. So not a. 3 times 10 to negative 8 is ultraviolet. Sounds about right. Okay, 12, 9 here is roughly 10 to the X-ray is much very big, right? 10 to the 8 lah, somewhere there. 7 to 8. Or seven. Ultraviolet, fair enough, possibly. Okay, but I want to check the rest first. Times 10 to the negative 7 are infrared. Cannot be la. 10 to the negative 7 already infra. So uh, sorry, already UV. So here has to be shorter. So infrared is well shorter. Small uh uh short lo, sorry, not shorter, longer than 10 negative 6. So I'll put maybe 10 negative 5 ish. Mm, then the last one, light waves. Oh, confirm wrong. We know light wave is visible light. They refer that. 10 negative 6. Wrong. Best answer, B. Sometimes there may be two answers that are very close. So we need to gauge your way. Lah, huh? Next two ones are on page 17. So try out these guessing games. Use the chart at first uh, if you haven't memorized it. But that's okay. Okay, so try at least these two. See what you get. Okay, first one. Which region of the electromagnetic magnetic spectrum includes waves with a frequency of 10 to the 7 megahertz. If you memorize in hertz, then you will see hmm, some kind of frequency, but I want to calculate in terms of wavelength. Okay, so I calculate in terms of wavelength. Sure, let's try this since we have not tried this. C equals to F lambda. C is a constant. 3 times 10 to the 8. Frequency is 10 to the 7. Uh -huh. 10 to the 7 got mega some more. Okay, lo mega hertz so what's our wavelength 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 10 to the 7 times 10 to the 6 that will give us uh, 3 times 10 to the negative 5 meter oh negative 5 is just below our visible 10 negative 6 visible so what's just below I bet it's radio infrared. Definitely not radio, and these two definitely not, because these two are much shorter wavelength. This one is too long already, a uh, longer wavelength. So infrared will be our best answer here. Okay, if you do the frequency, you memorize the frequency. Be careful here. Got mega here. Got ten to the seven or more. Okay. <clears throat> now, now, next. What can be deduced from a table of wavelengths? They don't give us a table in the exam. Okay. Uh, in the electromagnetic spectrum. So you have to go through each statement and see what's wrong, what's right. Green light has shorter wavelength than X-ray. Shorter wavelength means higher energy. Green light, X-ray? No lah. Wrong. Red light has shorter wavelength than green light. So shorter, wave, shorter wavelength means higher energy. No ah. Red, red light is longer wavelength. No. Wavelength for radio wave is less than infrared. 
less than infrared. Wavelength range. Ah, be careful. Range means like how much of this wavelength spectrum. Interesting. So you go look at your table again. Oh. Back at our table, if you look, uh, what has the biggest range? X-ray is second largest. Radio is by far the largest. So how, what's the range of possible ones? Okay, so if you come back here, wavelength for radio is less than infrared. No lah. Radio wave range is very, very big. Very whole range. So that leaves us with D. X-rays less than radio waves. So that's all for electromagnetic waves. Just some ideas about what are the estimation of ranges. Okay, use, use a chart similar to this. Create your own chart if something else makes more sense to you and think of ways to memorize. This is the only thing in physics you can memorize. Okay, think of ways to memorize your thing. This is a picture from, as you can see, Encyclopedia Britannica. So that's all for electromagnetic waves. Go try out some estimation questions all in the description below. And that's it for chapter 14.